audience, if you all have any, but uh, since uh, we have to move faster, I'm going to continue. Uh, another important and a very um, uh, relevant question that a lot of times a lot of people ask is that where do we get ideas from? Yes, we, you know, our mind thinks in a certain way and we can get ideas from our brains as well. But there has to be some inspiration or some source of uh, what I call a secret pool of resources. So according to me, if you are an event person or a planner, any creative person for that matter, then these aspects really matter a lot. For example, you can take a lot of inspiration from pop culture. So when I say pop culture, it means books, movies, uh, sports, fashion, and so on and so forth. Something which is uh, like mass culture, which everybody is used to or everybody knows about. So you can take a lot of inspiration from that. Then folk culture. When you say folk culture means festivals, destinations, um, history, heritage of a particular uh, place. Um, like, you know, for example, the Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is actually nothing but a uh, heritage event, which is, uh, which is created from some historical story that happened in the past. And then today it's a very popular event, which, is, which happens in Germany. Then there are abstract concepts. When you say abstract concepts means uh, time, for example, is a concept or uh, a museum is a concept. Uh, spa is a concept. So these are ideas or abstract concepts which can uh, give you further ideas on maybe event activities or what kind of a venue. If you want a very different kind of a venue for a particular event, you know, then why look at only just hotels and banquets? You know, why not a museum or why not a library? So these are these uh, things also can give you ideas and uh, help you think between the lines or think outside the box. Okay, uh, images are also like you know. A picture speaks a thousand words, as uh, you all know. Sometimes if you're stuck for ideas on an abstract concept, like say motivation or change, or you know, these are very abstract, but a lot of clients need these, right? A lot of corporate clients are looking for these kind of themes. So uh, what do you do when you are stuck over there? And uh, uh, it's very way you don't know, you're not getting any particular idea or direction. So uh, uh, you can just Google up uh, uh, the word image, uh, uh, sorry, motivation or change. And you see what it uh, brings up. And sometimes, you know, these uh, pictures or anything in the picture can also trigger a thought or it will give you a theme name. So you don't really know where your inspiration will come from, you know, so you need to keep trying and testing. Uh, a lot of people asked me yesterday that what do I do if I have a creative block? What is it uh, I can do if I cannot think anymore? I always say keep going back to your original, uh, you know, uh, secret pool of resources. For, for some people, uh, you know, the internet is a good resource. You want to read up a little more. And by reading, you will get some answers somewhere. You don't know how it tops up. For some of you, it could be a pop culture or by reading something, you know, you don't know where that inspiration will come from. So, um, in that as in that uh, moment don't pressurize your mind to keep thinking 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 because you will not like anything that you are thinking take a pause take a creative pause as i call it and then go back to your uh, to your secret pool or uh, whatever you call it, like pop culture, folk culture, uh, or go to the internet, read up, and then come back and start rethinking. So I'm sure that your creative energies will be unblocked and you will get some kind of uh, new direction to go forth. Right. So uh, this was primarily what was uh, required for you to know in today's session. And now I think we'll just move ahead. Uh, uh, so yesterday we stopped at this whole concept of ideation, like how to arrive at a particular idea. All right. So once you arrive at an idea, how do you develop it into a complete pitch deck, okay, something which will really impress your client or how much detailing do you need to do in that deck so that you're sure that you are in the consideration set at least. Okay, so uh, according to me, three critical aspects of winning a pitch are these. Ideas are definitely important. Uh, how you ideate, how does it resonate with the brief, all these things are very, very important to keep in mind. Not just the ideas, but obviously we all know that even packaging the ideas, like how you present them, how you tell the story, uh, not just on the deck, but the minute you go and stand over there in front of the client with how much conviction you talk, all these aspects are important. And of course, the costs, which all of you are masters at as well. Uh, so we're not obviously going to discuss the costs today because you all know that much better. Today, we'll talk only about the ideation and the packaging process in such a way that at least you know for a fact that, you know, I did a good job today. I know that my client is impressed. I know that I have 
you know kind of uh, made some kind of impact on them that they will definitely consider me for the next round so uh, coming to that how the first step is how to get ideas that fit okay now if you notice uh, i'm not calling how to get good ideas or bad ideas i'm just saying that getting ideas that fit in the brief so if it fits in the brief it's a good idea at that point so no idea is good or bad per se okay all ideas are good i feel because it's a creative process but for that brief whichever idea that really works well is a good idea and it's an idea that fits so our um, mission or our objective is to come to an idea that resonates uh, well that you think that the client will really like which fits in the objective all right so how to get ideas that fit so what is the first very very important thing that we need to do is decoding the brief the first step towards ideating obviously is the brief you get a brief from the client and then you start thinking towards it you start understanding the brief and then you start ideating towards that okay but the first step is decoding when we say decoding it sounds very complex but it's not complex it's just that you need to understand when you say thing between the lines you need to think between the lines for the brief that some things you know clients will not tell you very explicitly you need to understand what uh, the client is trying to say sometimes there is clarity sometimes there is no clarity so um if you do not have the clarity then you need to you know go back uh, read it three or four times and try and whittle it down in such a way that you understand that this is what i need okay so i'll come to that uh, so once you decode the brief um, you get your big idea or the big central theme that you're looking for or uh, depending on what event you're conceptualizing for once you get the big idea or the big uh, theme that you're looking for after that flow in the dna ideas what do you mean by dna ideas dna ideas are nothing but something which fits in the central theme so all the event elements around the say for example you're doing an rnr or you're doing a product launch and you have a big uh, central idea all your elements around it like the invitation or you know the gala night or it could be the pre event engagement all of them need to fit back into the central theme okay that is very important that's why you have a theme okay so uh, this is how you work towards getting an idea that fits and i'm going to take each of these individually as well so moving on uh, what is critical is in any presentation any pitch presentation is the client is always going to see whether your central theme is fitting their objectives okay so if they are asking for x your theme should kind of fit into that mold of x it could be a very creative idea no doubt but if it's not meeting the objective there are chances they will reject it then you will go back saying that it's not a idea they have widened they selected but ask yourself that is it meeting the objective so if their communication is say we want to bring in change uh, in the culture of our organization the idea you have taken is something very different you know will it help them if it helps them they will agree to it if it doesn't then maybe not so think about that before you uh, you know take your pitch to them all uh, elements around the central idea should uh, uh, connect back to that uh, theme to the brand story and the key communication should be delivered okay so the client is looking for creativity for sure but their main of uh, their main thing is that uh, these three parameters should definitely be met so they are looking for you to think different they are looking for you to think outside the box that's why they come to you as an agency because they do not have the in house capacity to think different so they come to you for that but at the same time you need to make sure that their objectives are met because they're doing it even that event for a particular reason if the reason is not met then obviously your ideas are not going to be uh, accepted right so Uh, keep this in mind if you start arguing with the cs team that uh, you know i gave such a good idea but you know you're saying that a client will not like it so think about it why they you think they will not like it all right so moving on step 1 uh, as i said that i'm going to discuss this a uh, little in detail cracking the brief code yeah okay here is a sample brief okay um it's a conference of a top bank brand okay the objective they have given is that we have to communicate that a big change is coming in the banking industry which is which can change the future of this industry and the idea is or the objective is to motivate the employees to be a part of history so apparently this is a few years back we had got this brief from 
uh, an agency and a big uh, bank brand wanted to have this conference for 3000 employees but they wanted to tell them that you know something historical is about to happen there's going to be a big change and you need to be a part of this history and it's going to be good for us okay the communication objective was the attendees or the employees they they need to absorb that they are the ones who would be the instrument of change in a manner suited to the bank's way of change so the bank is a big brand they will not do very knee jerk uh, uh, you know reactions or they are not going to react to the markets very badly but they'll do it in a nice organized way which the employees will feel very uh, 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 you know a part of it they should not feel that this is a very sudden change so this was um, a sample brief and how we decoded it is see look at the obviously when the brief came to us it just came in a very simple word document but when you are decoding it well you need to like really look for the keywords okay like big change is a keyword <coughs> motivate is a keyword because the objective is to motivate the employees okay the uh, objective is to communicate that a big change is coming so these are some key things that you need to look out for when you are reading the brief Uh, they now will tell you that this is important or that is important they will just put the brief out and they will just mention one or two lines and it's up to you to let, realize that you know yes this is this is what the objective is and this is what we need to do uh, they are the instruments of change so if you realize what they are trying to say is that it's not that the company is giving some gyan to the employee they want the employee to be a participant to this they want the employee to know that they are equally important and they are the instruments of change that means the change will come from them the company is not making big changes they are going to be the change so so on and so forth so you need to read between the lines and try and connect and try and understand what the message is all right it is possible that sometimes you're not right but that's fine because uh, you know once you decode the brief obviously you need to go back to the client and ask them that you know is this a right direction all right so this is just a sample i gave you uh, how to decode the brief or how to bring out the important points in that which you can miss out okay all right further now uh, what are some critical aspects of decoding the brief so you have a brief and you know many times clients do not know how to brief you know some clients are very clear and beautiful briefs they send so immediately you know what you are supposed to do but many times the clients do not know what a brief is they will just send you some three four documents word documents presentation read this read this and try and understand it you know and it's up to us that how are we going to understand all this information put together okay according to me whatever experience i have had so far i think these are the six things that you need to know primarily of course there are other elements which are important which uh, you know you have to customize the event at the end of the day so they are going to be important for the brief not that you have to throw them out but to start your ideation process you know the six things that you need to take back from the brief definitely are first is the tg okay many times what happens is that <coughs> we take the target group for granted that okay take employees hai na to doesn't matter we know what it is what employees are no you need to understand the profile of the employees the age group of the employees you need to understand the uh, combination like you know how many uh, ladies and how many uh, men are there you also need to understand that uh, what are the likes or dislikes you need to understand the industry in which you are dealing with you know so banking industry employees will be very different from obviously a media industry employee okay so whatever you idea it has to obviously connect back to that kind of mentality or mindset so please try and understand your target group very well okay um the next point is the background or the objective that why this event is being conducted like you saw the sample that i just shared uh, it was very clear that they wanted to communicate that a big change is coming and employees need to be a part of it so motivate them okay the objective was very very clear so similarly in the brief if your objective is not clear why is it that the client is doing this particular thing what they want out of it then again uh, you know you might go wrong in ideation because you don't have a direction you don't know where you want to go and what you want to achieve okay so make sure that your objective if it's not clear please ask the client okay what is the brand story like also understand the company a little more uh, what is their culture like and what do they like their dislikes what kind of people they are what are their values all these things are subtle and important to know what is the story behind their brand see sometimes you don't need to bring the brand in the idea 
it's not necessary okay but sometimes it's good to know because uh, there is a certain pattern in which the company thinks you know there's a certain way that the company operates so it's uh, nice to know your client if you have been working for them for a long time you already know that but if you're new to them then definitely make an effort to read up or ask the client about the company culture don't just take the brief from them and say okay i'll start ideating okay and then the next thing is communication takeaway uh, again very important to understand that what is the one message that uh, people need to take back from this uh, particular event okay so you're doing this big fat event and spending a lot of money taking so much effort doing a lot of shusha dhoom dham but in the end if the guests go back with nothing they haven't learned anything no value has been added again there is uh, you know a question to the whole thing that why did you do the event at all so it in every idea that you give it needs to come out very clear so if it is about motivating somebody then in every idea you give in the event itself you know there has to be some element of motivation or some communication which tells them that okay you know we are trying to motivate you that way okay again very important to know from the client that what they have done in the previous years okay sometimes uh, you do not know they have already done a particular theme and say coincidentally you go back with a similar theme there you know gone fuck you know the client itself will, uh, will shut you down in the first line oh you've already done this last year it's a big disappointment so i whenever i get a brief i first question i ask is what have they done in the last two years minimum sometimes it's a continuation of the last year's briefs or uh, last year's themes which is fine you need to add on or sometimes it's a completely new theme you need to think of but if you don't know what they've already done then there are chances very slim chances but there are chances that you might uh, come up with the same idea so that is extremely important to know and of course budgets because um, well uh, as in ideation you don't want to limit yourself uh, that okay the client doesn't have budget the client doesn't have budgets what do i think you know but when you're brainstorming don't keep that as a parameter but when you're evaluating your ideas when you know that okay the client doesn't have budgets to uh, do an event in a five star for example then you can think of a very different kind of a venue because we all know that what it's going to be in the next few uh months you know everyone is going to do cost cutting so how innovative we can get or how um differently we can think and cut uh, cost is is also up to us so and normally also when we are thinking of ideas uh, we should try and give uh, uh, you know unusual uh, venues or unusual themes as far as possible because um, what i have really noticed in the last uh, decade or so at from what i knew of the event industry when i started out here is that there has been a huge uh, i would say quantum leap of quality and uh, the the bar has been risen okay so uh, clients are also expecting a lot out of event agencies uh, and event agencies are delivering also and and some fantastic ideas and ips are coming out of us but um, at the same time uh, we need to keep that going you know we need to keep meeting those standards time and again but in finite possibilities as we discussed a lot of creativity out there so let's start decoding the briefs uh, in a really nice way and uh, start giving them some fantastic um, ideas tomorrow also okay okay one tip here which uh, i think will really help all of us is that yes you have all your elements brief elements pg dekh liya objective dekh liya sab dekh liya but what is that one uh, <clears throat> litmus test of a brief whether you know a brief is good or bad okay now when you are being briefed you know this is how my mind functions everyone's minds uh, uh, you know function differently but this is my personal experience is when i'm getting a brief from somebody and if it conduces some uh, induces some ideas in me if i start getting ideas if my my mind starts thinking in a particular direction it means that the brief is conducive to ideation it means it is giving me some kind of direction but if the brief confuses me or my mind doesn't know what i'm supposed to do you know i'm just moving around and around in information that means it's not a great brief that means it's not giving me a way or a direction to think i'm completely blocked okay so uh, that's a good test you know you that's how you know whether the brief at least i know whether the brief is good or bad so if you're getting confused in a brief then you need to go back to the client ask them more questions if you don't know what what's happening ask them these six pointers get a clarity and then go back to thinking okay <clears throat> so that's uh, my way of uh, functioning all right great so what i'm going to do guys is uh, whatever i'm going to speak about next you know the ideas to pitch process so i will do it through a case study okay mm -hmm. 
everything it's not possible to explain conceptually you'll probably not understand what it is so again i'm going to take this case study and uh, at every point i'm going to give you tips uh, so that you realize what we have done how we did it and also the flow like how do you put the ideas in a particular flow in the presentation so that uh, we cover it all in one okay otherwise there's a, there'll be a lot of repetition so this is uh, we had done this uh, concept for a client for our client and the brand was a switch brand okay they were taking some uh, uh, dealers for uh, it was an r and r event and they were taking some dealers the premium dealers to japan for uh, you know recognizing their efforts in sales so we had helped uh, the agency pitch and uh, uh, you know uh, with their effort or whatever they won the pitch and i think they executed it also so uh, that's why i've taken this case study because uh, you know there should be again a test of what is working what is not working okay now decoding the brief in this case in this particular case study just read the uh, brief with me it's a switch brand planning an rnr event for the premium dealers in japan the they were taking them to tokyo specifically now notice the word premium okay so there's certain we all know that companies have different sections of dealers you know some will be like less important some will be more important because they have done their sales and they have really done well a star this star uh, this club that club okay so this was for the top most club of the dealers the objective was recognizing the sales effort rnr okay what they wanted us to do was uh, connect the event from start to end with unforgettable memories so this is typically what clients want you know so if you're taking your dealers to a particular destination you want to give them the best you want them to make you know feel special and you want them to feel that oh, we are doing something really great for you and uh, also get um uh, uh sorry also get an idea of the culture of the destination that you're taking them to so propose some innovative ideas around that that was the kind of brief that was given and they had given a whole list of what is expected of them team say like it teaser invites and everybody mcs entertainment so on and so forth and even the gala night so uh, all these are elements which are expected of the agency and uh, obviously the agency is expected of thinking of something very creative uh, you know from the, right from the theme to the gala night to the giveaways everything needs to be thought through this is the expectation of a client typically because these are the requirements hmm? so understanding the tg so what we did was we understood that who these people are and uh, what is the composition so 80% male 20% female we sometimes we forget uh, to ask the client that you know because when you're doing giveaways and all you should know na that we have so many women coming in as well age group is 35 years plus so they're not very young they're experienced at the same time and they're not traveled a lot but yeah they've traveled a few places so you know that they have been there but probably not done that okay so you know the level of expectations that you need to meet so that's why it's important to know what your target group is and what your client is expecting okay another important detail they had given us that the theme that they had used the previous year was warriors so we knew that we had to stay uh, completely away from that whole uh, theme okay so this is what we finally uh, made the brief uh, made out of the brief rnr program for premium dealers taking them to japan objective motivate and give the guests truly memorable experience of their stay in japan okay <laughs> and the mission is to create an overwhelming experience and ensure that they have a gala time so motivating and giving them an uh, overwhelming experience in that particular destination so th these are the three things that we took back very clearly this is what we need to do okay so now we are clear that this is what the agency was supposed to do the next step brief decode ho gaya we brief decode ho gaya now what now we know that they do not want warriors as a theme uh, they do not want uh, uh, something uh, you know probably something connected to japan for sure because it's a destination uh, uh, event so the next step is in cracking the theme okay you bring the brand into it you bring uh, the motivation element also we have to keep in mind ki unko motivate bhi karna hai so how do you how did we go about doing it so in our ideation process uh, what we did was a trigger was a brand the brand was a switch brand okay so when you go back to your ideation techniques or <coughs> word mapping the switch brand uh, brought to us these little words like a switch switch on so when you switch on what happens light power fan everything all these elements came into our mind and then we did this technique 
स्विच से स्विच ऑन स्विच ऑन से पावर पावर से लाइट आता है एंड लाइट से क्या मिलता है ही शाइन ओके सो नाउ दैट्स वेयर इट इट एक्चुअली स्ट्रक अ कॉर्ड विथ अस दैट यू नो इट्स स्विच ऑन इट्स ऑल अबाउट स्विचेस व्हेन यू स्विच ऑन यू नो सडनली योर द लाइट इज ऑन एंड यू आर शाइनिंग एंड आल्सो इट कनेक्टेड वेरी वेल बिकॉज uh well you're talking about uh, these people who have actually achieved something so they are like the shine of the company they are helping the company shine brighter the future of the company is brighter so we took that uh, analogy and we connected it in this way so the theme came from the seed of thought from all these connections that the dealers have ignited an inner shine within them with the performance so the way they have performed so well all the inner potential is actually being expressed as they rise to a new dawn it's time for them to shine brighter that can brighten the fortunes of the company so they have kind of shown they have shown what they have what they can do uh, when i say shown means s h o n e like they have really uh, you know brilliant performances they have given and now it is time for them to shine brighter so that the company also shines with them the fortunes of the company shine so this was the uh, should i say the route that we started taking and the laddering that we started doing towards the theme okay so uh, i hope all of you are with me on this uh you'll just keep saying yes so i know that you're understanding and that you're uh, you know getting an idea what i'm trying to say because i don't want to be too fast or too slow thanks okay so a lot of people are understanding thank you okay so what next what did we do with the theme next okay <laughs> now the other connect that we made is well all of us know that japan is also known as a land of the rising sun okay uh, because japan is in the east and it is said that the sun's first rays fall in japan that's why it's known as the land of the rising sun and there are other analogies as well so we connected this that they have this inner shine with them and the fact that japan is a land of the rising sun so we connected the two and what we got was these were rising sun brand and shine okay so whatever the brand name was it was all about switches right switch on or whatever so this was a theme that we had proposed a rising suns which obviously means the dealers themselves switch on the shine okay so it brought back this whole aspect of shine and switch uh, switch on because it was a switch switch brand and the uh, destination everything in one and uh, this was motivating enough for them to understand that they are the people who are going to keep the future of the company shining so they needed to know how important or special they are so this was the idea the theme the big uh, central theme that you uh say this is what it was um and obviously once you have the central theme you need a visual route right to uh, take the central theme forward otherwise uh, you know like for example you need the logo and you need the other creative elements so how do you crack the sent the visual route like how do you how are you going to depict this graphically okay through a logo or some kind of a visual uh, mood board or something like that so again for this what we had proposed was uh everybody knows that this is the uh, flag of japan and the red disc the crimson disc as they call it is depicts a rising sun hmm so it also resonated with the brand color the brand color was also red so we took that um, it just fit in very well so we took that and we proposed that this red disc will be the central visual element of all the other creatives you know so because it represents japan it represents the rising sun uh, and it also represents the brand color so right from the logo to all other communication we use the red disc okay so i do not have the creatives uh, right now i cannot share uh, them uh, you know for permission issues uh, so but i leave you with this thought and just to make you understand that this is how we thought about uh, the whole visual communication and the ideation uh, uh, to begin with hmm? <clears throat> now how we took this whole route ahead so idea aa gaya rising suns uh, switch on the shine then the visual route has come so we use the red disc as a logo and uh, this was probably the central idea with which we had to go ahead so the keywords were shine okay rise shine and so on and so forth <clears throat> then how did we develop the pitch deck uh, once the brief was decoded we got the idea how did we develop the pitch deck main theme and the dna ideas dna ideas means can anybody tell me what the dna ideas are i'll explain it earlier in case anyone remembers yes the other small ideas which are connected to the dna of the of the main theme all right so great 
Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. Quickly. So uh, I'm going to keep giving these PPT tips also in between uh, so that you know when you're creating a presentation what you need to do along with the ideation as well. Okay. So first thing is start with an attention grabber slide. Don't directly start with, okay, this is the brief and this is what we need to do. It could be a theme-based introduction, for example. Now, any of you knows, um, uh, how do you say hello in Japanese? Can you just type it out for me if anyone knows? Hello in Japanese. Or how do you greet in Japanese when you meet somebody? Okay, some nice answers coming in here. Okay, hula is Spanish, but a couple of people have replied correctly. It's konnichiwa. So congratulations, konnichiwa, everybody. And this is uh, what we used for to start the presentation. Okay, konnichiwa, the name of the brand, because then it's an agency, right? And we wanted to bring from the word go that whole uh, Japanese flavor. Okay. And let us take you through the r, &R uh, ceremony, the Tokyo chapter, and then you put your company logo somewhere. Okay, so this is one attention grabber slide we used. Uh, y'all can be creative or y'all can use anything that you would like, you know, for all you know, you want to go and start playing the flute in the conference room before starting the presentation, it's up to you. So, you know, I've also seen the advertising side of, uh, uh, you know, the, the this whole creative gamut. And uh, I was in Ogilvy at one point in time. And I've, I was lucky to be participating in some mainline uh, presentations. And I was really amazed to see the kind of creativity that came out in the way people presented those ideas, you know. Sometimes they would just start playing the guitar in between just to give them a flavor, just to give the client a feel of the flavor of the whole concept. Sometimes they would start doing a role play, like a surprise role play. People wouldn't even know that they're role playing and they would just start like a flash, uh, like how you have flash mob, they used to do flash theater. So they were, empteen number of ways how you can do your presentation. I don't know how you guys uh, do it. You all do really get creative when you're presenting. If not, then you all can actually think about it if you really, really are serious about a pitch and if there is an opportunity and option to do it, okay? So uh, you can grab attention in many, many other ways and impress the client from the word go. If your client is very serious and if you feel that they don't like it, then don't take the effort. But uh, if for your own, uh, you, know, uh, you know, for that uh, whole, uh, energy levels so you can probably try that <laughs> okay i'll come to the questions later i see some questions i will uh if i can answer them i'll answer them right okay the next ppt tip is share an index or a flow so once you have the attention of the client the hello hellos uh, the greetings and everything have been done uh just give them an idea a walkthrough of the whole presentation and what all you have covered in it okay so again this sometimes we miss and sometimes we do it sometimes we don't do it but important because at least they should know what all they can expect in the presentation <coughs> and this is something which yesterday also we discussed that uh i feel it does matter you know at least let the client know that you are serious about your ideas and that uh, i know that there is a lot of uh, uh you know, it's a sensitive issue and a lot of this happens. Uh, your ideas are taken, somebody else executes. But I still think that till you make it evident to the client that, listen, boss, I own this idea. This is my effort. You cannot just take away and, and get away with it. Till you uh, don't take it seriously, nobody else will take you seriously. Somewhere you need to start making an effort and at least you need to start protecting your own ideas. So just put this slide if possible, that all ideas, and especially your designs, you know, I, I have... Actually, it happened to us also, like way back, I was working for an event uh, agency and it was a part of the creative team. And uh, we had designed uh, something on the Egyptian theme and we had proposed it to our client. And after two days, a client calls and says, you know what, you've got the same designs from somebody else. So luckily the client didn't steal our designs, you know, but somebody else took our designs and presented to the client the same thing. And, and they thought that we have taken from someone else. It is all that happened. So if you just put over there one slide, uh, you know, stating that this is your property and your authority, then at least they will know that, you know, you're guarding it. Somebody's there to take care of it. Hmm? All right. Uh, so we've already discussed the brief decode, but you need to put down uh, in words uh, what we just saw a few slides back, put it down to make them understand this is what you have understood from the brief that they have given so that you know for a fact that uh, uh, you are in the right direction. So in case you're wrong in the brief, 
by chance, then they will point it out immediately. Okay, so give them an idea that this is the basis, this is the brief, this was the information you gave, and this is how we are going forward. The next thing in your PPT flow should be explain the laddering. So how I explained that how we came to the seed of thought, how we came to switch on the shine. Please explain all of that uh, in a very nice and innovative way again, like, you know, thought by thought, process by process, which you already seen in the slides earlier. So I'm not repeating them here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, the next in the flow is explain the theme. Hmm. Uh, and then take the theme ahead. So now all the creative ideas and elements will come from here on. We saw the brief, we saw how we came to the central theme and then we saw the uh, idea, uh, the central theme, the idea and uh, how we came to it. So all of that is in your PPT now. And now how do we take it ahead? So give them an overview. What is the treatment? So when you say taking the theme ahead means how you're treating the whole theme, how you're taking it, are you taking it seriously? Are you taking it in a fun way? Are you taking it directly? Are you taking it in a motivating way? Uh, so whatever your line of thought is. For us, it was contemporary plus modern. Okay, because Japan is like India. India is also a modern country, but we are very, very traditional. Japan is also very traditional in its approach in many ways, yet it is still modern. Okay, so we have taken a blend of both. That was the approach we took. Hmm? Now, when you're starting a new section, say uh, one section is a brief, one section is a laddering, the third section is a creative route. Before that, just put something called a break slide. Okay, for example, in our presentation, this was a break slide. So you know that we now next we're going to talk about creative communication. Otherwise, what happens is that you know when you go from one section to the next, you know, there is a jump and the client will not realize it, or the person you're presenting to will not realize it, will not click. Oh, now we're going to talk about this. Okay, because when you're talking and talking and talking, like how I'm talking and talking and talking right now, you know, sometimes people switch off. It's very natural. So to bring them to notice that, okay, now we're going to talk about this, this, it will give them a break that, yes, this is what we're going to discuss further. We miss that uh, sometimes, so let's not miss it. So we're talking about creative communication and we begin with a pre-event communication ideas, okay? So keep in mind that now we're going to talk about how we connected the central theme to the other communication, the other event ideas, okay? <laughs> Always try to connect to the theme. It's very, very critical. Our theme was switch on the shine, the rising sun. So we have tried to connect everything to switch on the shine. Okay, quick question. Anybody knows what is an emoji? I'm sure everybody does, but do you all? Quickly tell me, what is an emoji? Okay, what are you feeling right now? Please answer with an emoji. Yes, it shows feelings it's an expression, smiles. You feel like smiling. I'm so happy all of you are smiling. It's an expression, yes, absolutely. So you're all feeling like smiling right now. You're feeling nerdy, geeky. You're feeling a lot of love for me. I'm also feeling a lot of love for you guys. Only my kids are not feeling a lot of love for you because they feel I'm going to be in this room for three hours and not going to be seeing them. Fantastic. Yes. So the em emojis are nothing but emotions which are expressed through a picture. Okay. But just to uh, uh, give you uh, a little bit more about emojis, they actually mean it's a Japanese word. Okay. It's a Japanese invention where E means a picture and moji is a character. So expressing emotions through a character. So all these smileys are actually emojis and they were invented in Japan. Okay, so because there was a Japanese connect to it, we thought that we will create a teaser invitation using emojis because again, the, the connect needs to come somewhere. Okay, um, the emojis would be customized as a red disc. So instead of the yellow smileys, we had suggested that we will use the red discs and we will create our own emojis with custom expressions. Okay, <coughs> so emojis were versus emoticons, emojis basically it's a picture character and it's a Japanese word. It's actually literally a Japanese word hmm, invented by them. Okay, now I have a quiz coming up for you guys. <clears throat> Listen, this was a teaser invitation we had uh, suggested and we had said that we will have an emoji, okay? And we will have this line which has a blank and the emoji will fill in the blank for the particular word which is missing, okay? 
for example, the first emoji, okay, it has a particular expression. Oh, you guys are just brilliant. I'm not even asked the question. You know, already started. Okay. Uh, okay, then what's the next one? The first one is dash to the annual MCA conference. What is the next one? We are dash to invite you to the land of the rising sun. Okay. Fantastic. I'm getting answers. Okay, <laughs> y'all are so smart. Okay, so great. All of you have um, full marks on that. And um, the, uh, the idea was to keep it simple, you know, because when you go for very complicated ones, uh, you know, clients you know, no, keep it simple so that, you know, people don't like to think a lot. But uh, I'm so happy that you guys have cracked it in like less than 10 seconds. Where are you guys? I mean, where are you sitting? I mean, are you all on some weed or something? So quickly you all are thinking. Great. Okay. So that's what we had proposed. That's what we tried and, uh, you know, uh, did, uh, did this, give them teasers like this. So uh, they would get the, uh, the idea that we're doing something very Japanese with them very soon. Okay, welcome, happy, sun. These are three different uh, emojis that we had given them. Okay, the next idea that we had given them is video invitations. Uh, but the effects would be like an origami effect. Like if you see this picture, I have tried to explain, you know, like you have or origami ka, uh, effect uh, and you can create a video out of that. So the message would be about the rising suns uh, communicate via haiku. So haiku is a Japanese poem and things like that. You know, so very everything we were trying to connect back to the theme. Okay. Another thing we had suggested pre-event was that uh, it's always better, or, you know, mostly we send itineraries to our uh, people who are traveling. So our itinerary would be called Doshu Go Bujoni. Basically, it means Bon Voyage in Japanese. It's uh, nothing uh, very, uh, you know, out of the world. Uh, we just did some research and we found out. And uh, then we would include uh, not just the itinerary, you know, but you know, typically how in travel itineraries, okay, these are some, this is Japan, okay, not many people speak the English over there, and none of us know Japanese. So what are some famous Japanese phrases that you can use and so on? So, so wherever possible, you try add value back to your uh, TG, that what will they need when they travel? So put a lot of thought into that and keep suggesting these ideas. So this is what we suggested to them. Okay, so that was all some ideas of the pre-event that we uh, did. And uh, now we are coming to the event flow. So I've used a break slide and now you know that we're going to talk about the event flow. Okay. Hmm. Again, a tip. Uh, I think all of us do this already, but again, important to point out that wherever you guys are taking them, uh, be it Spain or be it Japan or London, wherever it is, it's important to bring back some element of that uh, destination in your ideas because see people sometimes might be going for the first time, okay, and they want to explore like a traveler, like when you travel to a particular destination, you want to see everything, you want to experience the culture and the food and this and that, okay, so try and make it as experiential for them as possible because maybe they're going to the destination for the first time, make them a localite, yes, let them experience that place like a real localite, so brilliant, uh, thanks Drew for that. Okay, so um, what we suggested is that uh, the minute they land at the airport and when you're transferring them, maybe you can have a little bouquet of cherry blossoms with a message that Konichiwa keeps shining like cherry blossoms. You know, cherry blossoms are very Japanese and they come only in a particular season. So I think that was the season of uh, cherry blossoms. So we suggested that you will get them in abundance and they're very sacrosanct to this country. So uh, a very warm welcome we wanted to give them with this little bunch of flowers. And uh, in the bus, we had suggested that maybe you can have a flautist who is playing this traditional flute called shakuhachi. And uh, maybe throughout, like, you know, it's very melodious, this Japanese flute, you know, it's very soothing. So we had suggested uh, some kind of entertainment in the bus itself so that they start getting the experience <laughs> and uh, obviously when they arrive at the hotel and traditional Japanese hospitalities with these ladies in kimonos welcoming them and giving them a traditional Japanese welcome you give them rice cakes and Japanese fan and uh, we had given them some uh, uh, we had suggested that you can give them some um, uh, things gifts when they uh, uh, when they arrive you know so you can have fans for women and a wine bottle with covers for men what else do men want Okay, so there are these little cute kimonos and which you can cover uh, the wine bottles with. So we had suggested that as room drops. Hmm? Okay, so again, it's all uh, thematic, uh, bringing the destination in your gifts. Okay, the first day was at leisure. So again, uh, 
I'm sure a lot of you know already that uh, you know Japanese have a particular way, even Chinese, so that matter. They have a particular way of having tea. Okay, it's not like us ki chai gas pe banaya or pilia. They have a certain ceremony, and uh, they call it the the room, the traditional tea room. They call it is ryokan. So. i think this is a very ancient or very traditional culture that they have but it's very interesting because there is a you know japanese are like the chinese like us we are also very rooted traditionally right they also rooted very traditionally and there is a reason behind everything that they do so that tea is made of herbs and because they believe that certain herbs give you that energy and stuff like that so uh, refreshing tea is a refreshing uh, uh, drink for them so <coughs> there's a way it's a family thing also when guests come there's a certain way they serve it so the whole customary thing we wanted to uh, suggest that you can create this because uh, they had a day at leisure so let them start getting the experience of the hospitality so we had suggested uh, these are reference images we had taken okay then uh, again we had uh, uh, said that they can do some activities in the hotel because that day was completely free for them so uh, photography workshops because you know Japanese photographers. Everybody knows that how fond they are of photography, and you have some best photography brands coming from there. Uh, so you can get an expert uh, Japanese photographer to do a workshop for them. Um, sushi and the sun. So again, the names that we were trying to give are also trying to connect back to the uh, theme. So authentic cooking experience of Japanese cuisine. Kanji writing workshop. Kanji are these Japanese fonts. So uh, you know when they write in. Uh, in japanese they call kanji and fortune cookies every morning so these were some themes uh, some activities that we had uh, suggested uh, that they could do on day one okay <coughs> on day 2 they had the gala night so we had said that we can give them an invitation which i'll explain what we gave them as an invitation for the gala night and we can give scarves or hats to the guests okay the next uh, thing that we're going to talk about is the gala night and again um whenever everybody wants a different theme for a gala night obviously you cannot uh, have the same thing yes the central theme will stay the same but it cannot be just about japan all the time okay it cannot be just the same theme that you're carrying theme that you're carrying forward so uh what we suggested is uh, the the tip for you is explain a big theme with a laddering with a story with some kind of a logic okay so our logic uh, for our concept for the gala night was this while other cities of the world are called the concrete jungle tokyo is actually known as the electric jungle okay so this had come from our internet research because we had read about tokyo and what is special about it because we wanted to use something about uh, this place uh, in our gala night theme so anybody knows why tokyo is called the electric jungle anybody has been to tokyo it's a tech city yes the lights yes smartphones yes it's a tech city smartphones yes very it's an electronic it's a metro city full of metros cables okay okay <laughs> so yeah so somewhere in that space tech electronics uh, and so on and so forth but it is this is what tokyo looks like in the night okay uh, it's a kaleidoscope of neon led bright lights yes bright lights billboards shibuya street that's right so i don't know which street this is but this is what uh, uh, tokyo is more or less in the night this is what it represents so like a riot of colors and you know total uh, so much of uh, you know bright light shining and everything you know so how does it connect back in any i'm sure by now you would have probably realized why we like this thought uh, keeping in mind our theme so anybody wants to attempt what would be the next slide what would be the theme it's yes it relates to lights <laughs> it does yes okay so we get a theme of switch on the shine and we suggested the gala theme night to be electrifying tokyo okay very simple so uh, the idea behind that was when the sun goes down tokyo switches on its shine okay and uh, this is where the dealers would make a connect okay uh another tip uh whatever you're trying to explain always use reference images uh it's best to take designs because obviously uh things like e invitations or e mailers or uh, maybe you know even uh, what do you call them customized uh, uh branding all of these need your uh, 
your seal or stamp or you need some kind of branding on it so that there is some semblance to the whole thing so please take a lot of designs the more you detail it out the more impressed the client is uh, if you do not have uh, obviously things like these pictures of cities and all you cannot recreate but you can obviously use reference images to explain the concept but use make it very very visual okay great okay so that's where we got the concept electrifying tokyo from and the whole gala night was also about lights because again we wanted to connect it back to the the shine element but in a very different way um the gala night so was suggested to be a brilliant evening see the words also we have tried to use a brilliant shine related to shine and related to that whole sun factor okay evening of celebration of light shine and snazz of modernism so remember the first time i said that uh, it was going to be a mix of traditional and modernism because that's what japan stands for it's very rooted traditionally but at the same time as some you're rightly pointed out so much of technology so much of uh, you know electronics are being used over there people are completely glued on to their smartphones so it's a very smart country as well so we wanted a fusion of that coming out in the gala night as well and we wanted an idea or a concept which is visually you can recreate okay so I had said earlier that we had given them in, uh, an invitation for the gala night. I didn't explain it there, but uh, uh, for a reason because I wanted to be in the flow. So, what did we do for the gala night? We, uh, I don't know if any of you as kids have seen any manga or Japanese animated cartoons or Cartoon Network or whatever. But uh, uh, this is a style of animation which was developed in Japan. The, it's called a manga. So we had suggested that we will make an invitation using this concept. And what did we do? It will be like a small comic book, which will be like a story of a dealer. So uh, uh, we take the dealer as a protagonist and we create a story around his heroism. So when you say heroism, means obviously each dealer is a hero in the eyes of the company and you want to make them feel like uh, a hero as well that yes we have we are special and we are doing something really uh, uh, you know commendable so this whole manga like anime uh, uh, story book was supposed to be a protagonist uh, where the dealer is a protagonist and his story about how he has achieved something uh, for anchor okay so that was supposed to be the invitation idea hmm? <laughs> now another tip whenever ideating, always use a rationale for whatever ideas you're trying to suggest. Try as much as possible to explain the thought behind it because see, the idea might be really nice, but if people miss the connect, then they might not associate with it. So when you try and explain the backstory that what is the reason, why are you suggesting manga or why are you suggesting this comic book? What is, what value is it going to add? So you need to tell them that, wait, it's a Japanese theme. And secondly, you're talking about the heroisms of this particular dealer. So there is a reason behind it. So try and explain it because that will show how much you, how much thought you have put into that, uh, uh, into that brief. Okay. Now see clients don't just select uh, you only on the basis of the cost or only on the basis of, uh, you know, how good you look in your presentation. They want to see how much you have worked and thought about their brand. They'll feel very happy when they feel that, you know, this agency is actually taking us seriously and actually trying to connect, uh, you know, trying to understand our brief and trying to make the effort uh, to make this event very special. So they need to feel that you are also taking effort. Okay, so as much as possible, put in a lot of thought and try and explain um, your thinking process also to them and let them know that you have worked hard towards it. Okay. Right. Then the next thing in the gala night was uh, we had suggested that when they come in, we can give them a Japanese lantern. And this was a reason. Uh, I'll come to the questions I have. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it, but I don't want to break the flow. So please hang on to the uh, you can keep asking them uh, and I'll come to them later. I'll answer them later. So we give them a, uh, we suggested that we'll give them a Japanese lantern, which they need to uh, get with them at the event or we give it to them at the event itself. And there was a reason behind it. Okay, now <clears throat> we had suggested this kind of ambience and decor. The venue would be decorated with neon or LED lights or, you know, give them a whole color, colorful splash. Uh, so whatever is possible at that point in time, you would do, but conceptually it needs to look very rich and colorful. Hmm? We had also suggested that, uh, see, uh, 
what we wanted to do was as i said that uh, on day one they had a very traditional outlook of the whole experience okay they did the tea ceremony they would do or they would do all these um they experienced the flautist a lot of uh, traditional elements they uh, this but tokyo is a very modern city now suddenly from this particular uh, part of town to the other part of town you're taking them so we said that why not give them this whole um experience of as if they're traveling through time okay like from tradition they're going into modern a very futuristic thing <clears throat> also it communicates the future of anchor so we said that let's have like this little tunnel where it's all neon bright lights and led and everything and let them walk through this tunnel which means that they're moving towards the future hmm? <clears throat> the next thing we uh, suggested is when they walk in uh, these sons would be welcomed with neon robot drummers so actually when we did our research there was something called uh, so japanese drummers are very popular okay they are used in a lot of uh, events sometimes or very traditional events they are used so in japan being japan i'm sure they kind of did a little uh, reinvention and they have robot drummers it's a concept it's an entertainment idea actually which we understood when we were doing the research so we suggested this idea that you know when people are walking in to make them special feel special we can do these uh, uh, jap and see the colors and all that they are wearing you know again very shiny and very neon so it really fit well with the thing so we suggested that we could do this activity when they walk in then for pre event uh, we suggested that um, you can create a live manga studio so you know how you have these caricature artists in typical events so you go there sit there and they will create a caricature or a few and give it to you in a frame so we said we can have a manga artist and your the dealer's version of the manga character and then maybe we can have a collage which becomes a photo op like you see in the picture <clears throat> another hot tip is the devil is in the details so the more you can detail out your event and the more you can think that you know what will happen next where will they go what will they do what experience see the brief is that they want to give them a memorable experience a gala experience okay so every uh, place that they are expected to be in like you know they will enter entrance ke baad kya hoga they will go to the pre function area in the pre function area how do we keep them busy how do we give them these experiences you need to think about that you also need to think of small small little little things which probably the client also would not have thought of because you have to show that you are more experienced than uh, them okay you are the specialist so try and think of as many things as possible uh, uh, you know and try and connect it back to the theme and give a story for it so as i said the devil is in the details and sometimes these little things can actually win you the pitch hmm? so uh, uh, some activities we had suggested see usually we give away uh, you know you know when you give out a souvenir you know when people are moving you give them in a paper bag and so on and so forth it's the most common way but um, i had come across an um, idea where you know you play a game and whatever you uh, win you that's your souvenir so there is a whole shelf over there and all the gifts are are kept and you play this little game and you pick up whatever comes in your in your way so it's an interactive nice way of giving out gifts instead of just handing them so we suggested this idea that again it's very tech tech uh, japanese a very uh, tech uh, driven uh, country so we said that okay why not do a vr based game it's like the uh, ring tossing but in a digital way digital hoopla i call it uh, and uh, it's it's actually a game we figured out from somewhere and we thought it's fitting in well and we suggested this you know so that they toss the ring and whatever they win they get okay <laughs> we have suggested some uh, stages please these are not the designs these are just some references just to give them an idea what we wanted you know like uh, the whole animated district with the anime themes anime is actually the animation of japan the, the typical animation style of japan so we had suggested these animated backdrops with these kind of riot of colors you know with the sun shining and sun rising and so on so okay <laughs> then some uh, uh, entertainment uh, we had started that will begin with the theme launch and the awards with fillers like the geisha dance and so on and so forth because geisha everybody knows is very traditional uh, dance of japan ancient since ancient times but it will be done a little differently in vegas style hmm? a very modern approach then uh, why did we give the lanterns because we wanted a kind of a lamp lighting ceremony where you're depicting the switch on the shine element see the gala night is somewhere where everybody will come together they will celebrate uh, and there the theme will be launched and there people will you know actually have to experience the theme in some way or the other and like if you are telling them switch on the shine that how we're going to depict it so this is a very critical aspect guys uh, you know 
whether it's this conference or any other conference where where you need to motivate the employees uh, there is one little thing you should add is what is that one community event or activity that the all the people are going to do together you know because there's a lot of power in that you know all the clients want that that there should be some team activity or some team event that put together they can do so that's why we had suggested we'll give them japanese lanterns and uh, uh, because it's all about switching on the shine so at one point in time they would come together and just light up the lamps together and maybe we can make an installation out of it so that was the idea behind uh, <coughs> that and japan has many colorful styles and many colorful different kinds of lanterns so we would have taken selected the best and uh, taken the pledge to keep the company's name shining so that was the whole idea behind the ritual okay so uh, moving on there was some uh, they were very i think clear that they wanted celebrity singers uh, for their entertainment so we had suggested some celebrity singers i don't know finally what uh, uh, was executed but uh, these are no brainers i mean we have lot of options all of your experts at that okay and in the end we said that let's uh, have a neon parade to end the celebration uh, with a bang like you know how in disneyland you have that led parade in the end so you can have these costume dancers and dancing throughout a lot of music and stuff like that and it will end in a very uh, good uh, way in a very uh, bang okay thanks thanks so much <laughs> and so on okay so <clears throat> so that is how we had proposed we had taken the proposal i had given it to uh, my client and they had given it ahead to their client and they had uh, i think executed it now out of this honestly i haven't had the time to ask them what all was done what all was not done but for me my role was that well it got them the pitch okay so i'm sure they would have done a lot of work after that you know it, it's not only the deck they would have done the designs the agency would have done the costing they would have done a lot of hard work on this as well but my satisfaction was that okay, at least this concept got them to a space where uh, you know they could go ahead and win the business okay uh another tip that i want to give you is take an alternative theme now obviously when you're ideating it happens in all briefs when you're thinking uh, there will be so many ideas that will come to your head and sometimes you will be confused or sometimes the creative team will say this will work sometimes the cs team will say this will not work so there will always be a debate so irrespective of your debates to keep your client impressed and happy i would suggest that ideally you should take two themes if you have the time you develop both the themes okay uh, in as much detail as possible if you do not have that kind of time but if you are conv convinced that you know this first idea of mine is very good to go work on that completely put your heart and soul in that and the second uh, idea take an alternative theme and develop it to a certain extent you know just give them a peak of look okay, this is the theme this is the laddering this is the thought behind it and just give them two or three basic uh, little idea the like dna idea so this is how we can take it forward so if you feel that this will work then we can work so when you give an option uh, the the client will feel that okay they have worked more than just one thing and at least i have something to choose from okay one more thing that i have not put it down here but uh, sometimes what happens is that uh, you know clients are spoiled for choices and uh, you know how you've been to a sari shop and you see a lot of ladies they keep asking or the cow or the cow clients have got into that habit with us we keep giving them options which is okay you know if you find with it please so my suggestion is or what works sometimes i feel is that when you give them three options now they are bound to select at least one from the three okay uh, it is i don't know what it is it's not a formula uh, but this is what i've noticed so instead of giving one option um, or two options give them three and uh, give them one which you are really convinced with and you feel that this will really fly through and the other two could be just about okay you know they're not great they're not bad either but you are not convinced so when you give two less better options um, i don't know grammatically it's not right but you get it right then you are you're sure that the best one will actually be selected so try it out next time you know take three options and uh, it shows variety and the client will probably just move between these three ideally they would select at least one of them uh, i hope it works uh, it's worked in most cases for me at least so that's that so give them alternatives hmm? another hot tip uh, if you are working on a ppt where do you get image resources from <coughs> 
uh, uh, Google has uh, copyright free images also. Uh, Wikimedia, you can refer to creativecommons.org, uh, freepick.com, Pixabay, all of these have uh, uh, copyright free images. Uh, see, one thing that I can say is that if you do not find the right images, but you, they're still important, right? You need to depict your idea through them. So even if they are not copyright free, so you're not using them for exactly selling it or reselling it or anything or for a ticketed event. So I feel you can take that little creative liberty and maybe give credit to that author under the image that, you know, this is an image by so-and-so or these images are only for reference and they do not belong to us. So if we are so particular about um, copyright and also even if we use uh, an image from Google, uh, which no one can stop us, uh, but at least we should keep our ethics in place and at least give credit that okay, we have taken this image from this link or so on and so forth. All right, another tip. Okay, I'm going to pause here and allow you guys to ask me just, I'm sure all of you are waiting to, you know, uh, for me to pause and so that you all can talk. So is there anything you want to ask me? Is there any question, doubt that you'll have in mind about whatever we have discussed so far or all of you all are like really saturated? Did Ang uh, Anger did you propose it? So I am not really sure. Uh, PL, I, I don't know what the name is. I can only see PL here. Uh, see, my thing is, I had given this proposal to my client, and after that, what happened? I'm not really sure. So unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, venue of the event affects the ideas. Definitely, it does. Uh, theme? How about Delhi, Tokyo? Okay. Yeah, Delhi to Tokyo. Uh, if you can explain that a little more, it would be great. Any more questions? Is everybody awake? Just say yes if you are. Awesome. At least two, three people are. Okay, Gala Night was on the lines of. One sec, I have a question. Gala night was on the lines of nightlife in Tokyo, neon and electric boats. So how do you manage to connect the rising sun to the stage concept? Um, so Saloni, good question. Uh, see, what we had done is that it was all about shine, lights, bright, sun, everything in the same uh, uh, category. Okay, so that's how we had uh, given the idea that your stage can be this uh, the rising sun, uh, you know, with very neon, very LED kind of uh, effect, you know, very bright, uh, bright lights. So it was a very conceptual thing. Uh, ultimately, the designs and everything were done by the agency, but at least conceptually, we had suggested to connect it back. So, right, I hope I answered the question, how do you manage to connect rising sun? So, so we had thought that, you know, maybe the backdrop would be such that, <clears throat> and the one of the LEDs could show uh, the, the, the sun rising, but the LED way not the actual J uh, vinyl or something like that. So it would become very bright. Okay. I hope that answers your fight away. All right. How do we end the PPT? Okay, good question. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, uh, how do we end the PPT? It's a, it's a summary is a good way of uh, ending it and, uh, uh, you know, giving them a whole... Uh, idea that what all we have discussed so far. So fantastic input. Thank you so much, uh, Michal. Uh, words versus images. What do you prefer more by presenting the idea? And if it's a combination, what is the approximate ratio? So words, ideally not more than three or four lines. Uh, you know, images, the bigger, uh, the better. Don't, but give your slide some breathing space. Don't capture the whole slide with an entire image. Give it some space. I'm sure you use templates. So keep a placeholder for your image and just explain that in maybe just three or four lines, okay? If you have too many points, then break your slide into two or three slides. Uh, also, I'm assuming that you're not sending the slides to the clients as we spoke yesterday. It's always better to, to do face-to-face -face, uh, presentations. So the less you explain on the slide, the better. Uh, the more you explain verbally and tell them the whole story, uh, you know, it, it has a different impact altogether. So don't use too much of text, okay? There's no ratio, but as I said, like, uh, uh, if you're talking primarily from the aesthetic point of view, then uh, the image should be at least 60, 70% and the text should be just maybe 20, 30% of the whole slide. 
how about communication take away one message from the event so the message that they wanted to so in this case there was no one message they wanted to motivate and make them feel special so all the themes all the ideas that we tried to give them like you know you're the rising sun and uh, we were like giving all these experiences to them which made them feel special that they are something i know things like this little comic book which depicts the heroism of the sales people so uh, the objective was to motivate and not give them one particular message and to give them the gala night uh, the gala uh, experience of being in japan so everything japanese we tried and put into that that way and the theme also yeah so since it was a uh, yeah it's about robots we could do some engagement yes we could do uh, welcome with robots or everything uh, so one idea we did suggest was robotic drummers but yes we could have done uh, you know maybe a workshop on robotics and make them help them make their own robots that's also very much possible in the small world many times agencies think alike if the idea matches how can we copyright and how can agencies convince a client that the idea can be executed better than anybody else uh, okay so copyright again this uh, this thing question is cropping up uh, so don't worry about what other agencies are thinking okay as long as you know that you have not taken from anybody else you can put that over there that this is my copyright okay now the strange thing about ideas is that uh, these are ideas are electric impulses okay and once you think of an idea you will not be surprised you will after some time after one month one week you will realize that somebody has thought the same thing and it happens more than often than not okay because uh, i don't know if you know this whole background but you know uh, ideas are like you know these thoughts that we are giving out in the universe and this is not uh, uh, some uh, random shit i'm talking i'm uh, i have read some books on how the brain works and uh, from here um, i have derived the fact that the thoughts that we put out in the universe we are like the radio okay we are like a radio and we are always taking these frequencies from around us so if we take in negative frequencies we feel very negative if we take in positive we feel very positive so even ideas are floating around once you think of something they float around and you never know someone else will get the same idea at the same time you know like telepathy sometimes you get a thought that okay let me call the person and the person will immediately call you or it happens many times so these are not coincidences this is just basically physics in a certain way so don't worry about that because you can be sure that somebody else is thinking of the same thing but uh, you need to come out with it first just put it out over there that i have thought of it first this is my idea uh, if someone else comes up with it then well good luck to them as well and we can how do you convince the client that the idea is executed better see i think credentials will help a lot and the conviction with which you uh, speak about the idea and the more you think about it the client will get the confidence so if you are confident about it and you speak confidently and say we can do this and you have solutions and answers to everything so once you have the pitch deck ready i think you should obviously you do a dry run uh, sit with somebody who is a devil's advocate okay before you go to the client just don't do the last minute work okay sit with a devil's advocate sit with the most uh, sit with a person who is very negative or just put on your black hat and ask the person to be very critical and ask him to ask all kind of funny questions you know how this will do how will it be possible and you need to take all answers you should be sure that whatever you are suggesting is doable is it feasible is it good uh, is it a good idea is it fitting or not so if you are convinced and you can speak with a conviction and you know that if a client also asks these kind of questions you will assure them that yes this can be done or you know we can do this better than anybody else so it's your conviction that is going to show okay and your credentials also so you can definitely convince the client that you can do it better than anybody it's your idea you understand it so well and you are so passionate about it images should be a good way and make your own story yes images do really help more often than not do two people think of the same idea i just explained how it works they do and uh, maybe the names would be different but the conceptually sometimes the ideas can be very similar hmm? maximum how many slides in an ideal press deck <laughs> don't think about the number of slides because uh, as i said the more detail 
as long as you're not boring the client okay since you have a lot of details a lot of ideas uh, in the presentation it doesn't matter how many slides you have because uh, at the end of the day it's not they don't count how many slides you took they will count the number of ideas and the detailing that you have done so don't worry about that at all as long as you've answered all the questions you can do it in maybe even five slides but if you feel that everything is present in a five slide which i need to do do it in five slides okay does does taking thematic gifts or props to your presentation yes it does Yes, it does. So I'm going to cover that as well. Uh, it, it was a tip that I was about to give, but thanks for pointing it out right now. That if you um, take samples with you, maybe something which you've already done, or maybe you actually get a sample created uh, before you go for the presentation, it really adds a lot of value. As I said, um, clients are very happy when you work hard towards their. Uh, pitches they know that you have really taken interest and sometimes it's very surprising that um, uh, you know uh, sometimes bigger agencies have a lot of work you know uh, they cannot give or pay attention to a lot of briefs so that's the time when if smaller agencies can pay attention because clients want attention okay they want uh, that uh, my brief somebody should take me seriously so if i have gone to a particular agency and i feel that you know they have not done a great job or if they are just taking me for granted or they have not put that much thought to it with all good intention it's not that the big agency doesn't want business everybody wants business everybody loves it but sometimes it's whatever reasons they're not able to so uh, at the same time if you are not that big an agency and if you're pitching against uh, you know the other stalwarts then don't limit yourself in fact you should take more effort and you should put out much more uh, you know than uh, any other agency would do you would say but doesn't matter it's their favorite agency they will get the business well your job is not to think of that your job is put your heart soul everything in that pitch if you're a smaller agency all the more reason why you should be working hard towards uh, that and if you can convince your client with your hard work it will work and it has happened with me i'm telling you uh, with conviction because uh, i have done that you know i used to consult a friend uh, long back and uh, his was a mid size agency and there was this big telecom brand which was being launched and they had crores of money to spend you know in all kinds of budgets they had for advertising this that and even events and activation pan india they wanted to do we had gone for a meeting and uh, i remember they had called i think every agency in india you know at least 20 or 30 people though i knew were sitting there from the biggest agencies to the smaller agencies and i remember that uh, we were um, so many of us and we were like wondering that how are we going to like you know even match against uh, the stalwarts so we said no problem like let's put our best uh, foot forward and do whatever is the you know so we went back we thought we given all kind of ideas they said don't worry about the budget just give ideas so we went all out and we you know really really given our heart so we put the ppt together they had given us one week and they said come back and all the way to pune so we did that and we presented and we gave some whatever ideas they were good bad i'm not going to uh, comment on those uh, uh and and i mean somehow we couldn't believe it but the uh, the client he was a marketing head he called us for the second round okay and there were many other bigger agencies which were not called for the second round okay so it was it was actually a big surprise for us that we were considered uh, for that you know but it was primarily because we had put a lot of effort in the presentation now ultimately after that what happens is completely uh, a different ball game like you know whether you have the bandwidth to uh, do it not do it doesn't matter at that point in time your role is to make a pitch winning presentation in such a way that uh, the client should feel that you are interested and you are capable of delivering this okay um Uh, for multi agency brief sometimes many agencies present in one room and the same brief in different ways and how to tackle the situation the idea is already presented and on the spot how to change i feel do not change your ideas no need to do that uh, i feel that even if ideas are similar okay uh, maybe it's a learning and next time if you feel that this idea is too obvious as as i said you can always have alternatives so if you have an alternative at least you know that you have something different you can't all agencies cannot have the same alternatives at least right one idea can be similar all three can't be the same uh, that's too much of a coincidence so uh, take three options uh, one big option like one main detailed option and the second one could be the smaller options now even if the theme or the concept is similar but the treatment will be very different your designs will be very different and the way you present it will be very different so all you need to do is 
you know, make sure that you present it so well and with so much conviction that even if your idea is similar to the other agency, it should not shake you up. It should not uh, make you feel nervous that, you know, it's already present As I said, ideas, same ideas can come to two different people at the same time. But how you, what you make of it is up to you. Okay, so ideas are ideas, but how you develop them is up to you. How you present them is up to you. These ideas will help us and it tells uh, us to think easily and sometimes we go aggressively, which will in turn restrict our creativity in some way and also come up with very common ideas. Right. Uh, thank you. Excellently presented theme. My question is, when you start presenting a client, what should be ideal sequence of presenting themes? I mean, the one that you have developed the most should be presented first, or maybe second, third sequence, because most of the time it happens that usually the client asks for more. So you should present the one that you have developed completely in detail, because there it shows your level of thinking and how much detailing you have done. So your impression, first impression is a lasting and lasting impression. So show that presentation first. After that, the smaller ideas or the uh, other ideas you can show. In the PPT flow, uh, you, do you mention all the event options in one section of the presentation or do you describe the alternate? Yes, do not give all your cards away. First, just show the first theme and then you will come to know whether they're liking it, not liking it in the interim. You will get some kind of feedback because you know, uh, like yesterday, I explained that what is the litmus test of a good idea? When people, uh, their body language will change, they will start asking questions, they will start feeling a little excited, you will come to know whether the client is accepting or not. If you feel in between that, you know, a lot of them are like just nodding their heads, or you know, maybe they're looking at their phones, you will feel that this is not engaging them enough. So uh, just take those little, little tips from the body language of the client. Now, if you feel that they're really excited about the idea, and if you think that you don't need to show it, then you can stop there, you can ask the client that, hey, listen, we have more options, do you want to see if they say yes show more then show more if you if they say no no we are happy with this then let it go but do not show it first and don't tell them that you have three four five options open it after the first option okay next question um 20, 10 20 30 formula 10 slide for 20 minutes and 30 font uh, size can you talk about this and if you use this okay 10 slide for 20 minutes and 30 font size uh, so Sunny, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand this question because honestly, I've not used this formula in a 10, 20, 30 way. If you can elaborate, then maybe I can uh, help you. <clears throat> Any technical specs to be taken care of while making the PPT? Uh, when you say technical specs means uh, exactly what, again, if you can specify, Michelle, it will help me. Uh, most times I've seen, however good your press deck is, the client first wants to see is the costing slide. Uh, yes, so I think that's again a challenge. Uh, and uh, uh, see if it's fitting within the budget, then there is absolutely no problem in seeing, uh, you know, showing them the costing slide. Uh, but if you feel that uh, that is not the way to go, you can tell them that, listen, let's just go to the presentation. I'll show you the cost. Let's see the ideas. And then based on that, so you can play it, uh, as you, uh, as your client wants it to be. Uh, how do you still get a good balance between the costing and the creative agencies? Okay, I'm sorry, Tanaz, you'll have to be a little more elaborate. I, I didn't get you. Uh, which media is best to present like a projector or laptop? Like any unique suggestions uh, you can give? <laughs> Uh, uh, see, a, a lot of clients have their own uh, uh, AV screens sometimes in the conference rooms. So you take your laptop and you connect with, uh, please make sure you take all your jing bang, all your connectors and this and that along with you. Uh, and uh, you can connect it to the screens that they have. Uh, and if you're asking with software, then PPT works the best, okay? Uh, if you have a Mac, sometimes it creates issues in some systems, but uh, if you have the connector, then uh, usually there's no problem with the Mac. Or you can take any uh, Windows system also. I don't think it's an issue and use PowerPoint. I hope that was what you were asking, all right? 
font size, color, image placement. Okay, so Michelle, I don't know if you attended uh, Sukr or you saw Sukriti's session on uh, PPT presentation creation skills. I think it was a very nice one. Uh, for that, you should definitely see both the sessions. And if you still have more questions on that, then you can ask uh, Sukriti also, you can ask me also, I'm uh, happy to help. But uh, all your answers will be, uh, uh, you will get over there, okay? Um, most clients will not give the budget. So what are the tricks or questions we have to ask to get their budget? No tricks, just ask them directly, what is a budget? Or give an estimated range. So you can ask them, you know, what's the minimum to maximum? What should we think in? Sometimes clients will say there are no budgets. We don't know what it's going to be. So no problem, take your ideas according to that. But see, by with experience, you will know that you know, clients do not spend more than this. Now, if they say, okay, destination theme karna hai, or go Japan leke jana hai, you know that they will have a certain budget. You know, I'm going to take them to Japan without any budgets. But if you say, can you a conference karna hai, only 200 people with your experience, you can estimate, okay? On your own, you can make a sort of a cost ki itna to budget uh, uh, ideally hona unka. Because by now, even clients know, okay, if I want to do a 200 people ex uh, event in a banquet, then at least uh, two, three lakhs so kahi nahi gaya with my uh, system and stage and Medicine, you know so uh, you can estimate the budget on your own with your own experience if the client is not willing to give you use your own uh, judgment clients usually say that budget restricts the creativity and clients say that if we give budget then you think less and so you won't give budget so how do you tackle that i feel that it's great that they don't give budgets but as i said you know at least you can estimate no they will not spend more than this. They're not going to spend one crore in, a, you know, for like a 200 people session. So you keep your estimate in mind, ke itna hai. but at the same time, you're going to take a variety of ideas. You're going to take at least two, three, four ideas to them. Uh, so one or two ideas can be like keeping the restriction in mind and one or two ideas can be a little crazy or going wild. You never know if the client likes it. They say, okay, TK, chalo, I'll sanction the budget. We'll do it. So on the ideation stage, do not uh, get restricted all the time. Uh, don't think too much about the budget if they are not willing to give you. If they give you the budget, then you know that there is a parameter. Sometimes, um, even if they give a budget, uh, it should not again stop you from giving an alternative, which is a little more expensive. Let your creativity flow. Let them know how you are thinking. See, this is again a very... Uh, uh, this thing about clients that they really like to see ideas they really like whether they can execute or not is a different thing but if they see good ideas then they really uh, will lap it up sometimes they even just take it and they will do it themselves you know these kind of things they will do but uh, 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 you guys should uh, not feel very uh, dominated by that so let give ideas give your let your creativity flow um, and uh, don't worry about the budgets uh, too much initially Okay, any more questions or anything which I have not? Uh... So can I move on then? Okay, so let's move on. I'm gonna quickly check the time. <laughs> it's 3.36, we have about an hour. So I'm going to move on to the next uh, section, uh, okay? This is a second uh, case in example. I want to explain, uh, you know, how you can also make a pitch winning ideation presentation. And it's not just the ideas that are important, but it's also something else which is important that you need to keep in mind. Um, the first one was an r, &R uh, event. And the one that I'm going to talk about uh, is an internal employee event as a much smaller scale. And this I actually covered yesterday to a certain extent as my case study. And I had said that I will discuss it further that how we executed the, uh, the idea, the concept. So for all those who were not present yesterday, I'm gonna quickly uh, brush through again, the recap the brief. Okay, uh, the brief was, it was a tech company um, and uh, based in the US and also has a branch in India. The target group for which we had to ideate was these young, uh, IITians, you know, uh, young graduates of IIT, software developers, 25, 26 year old, uh, people who have been newly employed in the organization. Now the brief was from the learning and development team, people who are responsible for the knowledge building or for taking care of the employees development. Okay, so their thing is that they have this uh, uh, 
twice in a year, they have something called a learning day for everybody in US and in India. And on the learning day, they have a lot of workshops, okay? They call people from outside, speakers from outside, or even from within the organization. And uh, uh, they have these different sessions, breakout sessions in their office only. They convert all the conference rooms into classrooms. And uh, they have this whole, like, you know, if you've been to a literature festival, how they have workshops on this day, this time so-and-so speaking, this time so-and-so speaking. Similarly, this uh, uh, whole learning day was also full of workshops. So people can register or enroll for whichever topic they think is interesting okay now the idea the objective was to transform <clears throat> the learners experience when they come to the classroom and reinstilling the sense of a strong learning culture because they believe that you should not stop learning ever so even if you have been employed in a great company it doesn't mean that uh, you know you have achieved something in life it means you need to keep growing with your learning so that is a very important message that you wanted to pass across but um, um, they had thought of this theme that uh, called back to school because it was all about uh, you know a classroom experience they wanted to give uh, that was a theme but the challenge they had was that back to school very sound sounded very dull and very academic so they said that how do we make it interesting because ek to, uh, getting people to enroll for these workshops itself is a little you know uh, a little bit uh, tough uh, and then you calling it back to school so how do we deal with this so that's where they had uh, floated the brief i think and uh, somehow as we were connected uh, we were sent the brief that okay as a creative agency is there some uh, uh, idea or creative campaign that we could create uh, uh, so that it solves the problem and we could pitch in so uh, we started uh, conceptualizing and we used this technique of word mapping so all those who missed uh, word mapping uh, uh, this is how we started linked uh, linking it okay so learning if you uh, remember the brief the brief had this word which I have marked out called learning, learners. So learning was a big uh, uh, key word because it's a learning and development team and they wanted to focus on the learning aspect of these, uh, uh, these people. So we took the trigger word as learning. Then it gave us, uh, even school was an important because they already had back to school. You know? So we, we took these two triggers and we tried to connect and make a pattern out of it. So when you said school, uh, you know, the, the first thing that came to our mind uh, was Hogwarts School of Magic and Wizards and then Harry Potter. And that's where it stopped because we said, oh, this is a good theme uh, to go with. If you want to make it quirky, uh, yeah, you know, if you want to take out the boring. So we took this option of uh, back to school magic of learning uh, as the underlying theme and which they really liked because uh, again, that whole feel of wizardry and magic came in that and the magic of learning was a very nice uh, sentence or a tagline, I would say that they connected with immediately. So uh, <clears throat> the creative route we took, uh, the inspiration pool was pop culture, obviously everybody knows of Harry Potter. But again, as I had said yesterday that uh, the copyright issues would all, because see again, uh, in India, if you do an internal event, thoda bahut chal jata hai. we kind of take a little leeway in that, you know, but when you do it in an American uh, uh, company, then they will not take it very kindly. They're very, very strict about um, IPs and everything. And we also need to be uh, actually here. We need to develop that culture very, very seriously. Anyway, so uh, we wanted to stay away uh, from that. Even they, they brought out the point, you know, we are not thought about that. Yes, you know, it can create issues. So they said that, listen, Pyle, we like the idea, but can we do something about this? We want to go with this wizard theme. So that's where the challenge uh, lied. So what we did was we used the theme because see wizardry, the school of magic, uh, they are concepts, okay? Wizard is not a new concept. It's not something invented, okay? Wizards were always there in all stories and fairy tales and folk tales who come across wizardry and they're wearing these hats and everything. Um, so we used the theme without using the actual characters on the name. So we derived inspiration uh, from that um, idea and how did we execute it you know so uh, see this was not a big fat event as i said but there were a lot of uh, small small elements like you know pre-event content that needed to go out the objective was to create excitement the objective was to uh, make them feel that something different is happening uh, it's like you know old wine in a new bottle or in a different bottle so uh, we uh, the, the the bottle was this whole 
wizardry theme or the magic theme or the, uh, in this magic of learning and it just excited so that was what we wanted to achieve we wanted people to enroll for the programs that was the idea so uh, with uh, uh, for that we had to do a lot of pre event content a lot of pre bus content to make them understand what the theme is and make them uh, you know feel very uh, very excited about the whole thing and very few thematic on ground ideas like you know some standees or some communication they wanted and some photo booth they wanted they didn't want to do anything very large scale or uh, at a grand scale but what really uh, uh, i'm going to tell you why i'm sharing this case study um so for the pre event content we had all of these teasers and quizzes and save the date and all of this okay so before i share with you guys what is it that we did uh does anybody want to throw in uh ideas that if you were in in our place then what would you have suggested or what would you have done for small small uh, you know on ground ideas to keep the excitement going so you all want to share brainstorm a bit and uh, exercise your brain muscles or creative muscles so the question here is um if you all were given a magic of learning theme and you all had to create excitement around that event and you all wanted to tell these 25 26 year old iitn or software people that come enroll for this uh, okay through a wizard theme so what kind of content Uh, you could have given before the event or maybe small small little little things you could have done as experiences to, uh, around this theme of magic of learning or wizardry for people yeah uh, conduct a wizard workshops okay sorting hats okay interesting <laughs> okay workshop on making cocktails awesome uh, divide the department into different gharanas like gryffindor okay uh, before the event you said all right workshop on making cocktail okay small tricks career oriented messages invitation through seal uh, or a scroll yes uh, interesting again okay so i i really like the idea of cocktail making i should have suggested that first okay dress codes okay so great so uh, uh interesting a lot of you have given some very nice uh, ideas magical phases uh, digital magician good idea uh, illusionist for creating interest good idea so cool i think uh, mm, uh, you'll have some really nice things going out here okay so uh finally i will tell you what we did uh, which was appreciated and they did tell us that uh, you know uh, people really liked it and i'll tell you what the results were after you see what we did for them okay so we first uh, we got the logo designed uh, to be very uh, honest uh, we the ideas everything was ours the content ideas was ours the concept was ours uh, but we had uh, tied up with another event agency because the execution was something which uh, we are a creative agency we're not exactly an event execution agency so while we had uh, won the pitch based only on our ideas we had partnered with another execution agency to help us so they did the actual designing and everything because we thought they will be more in control and we did the copy and the content and everything for them but we worked like a team very seamlessly and it uh, it worked for the client as well so what kind of content or what kind of activities we did uh, pre event event post event very quickly i'm going to take you through uh, the tip over here that even your content can win you pitches you know when i say content it means the ideas it means the copy you know sometimes the way you write or sometimes the way you uh, present a particular idea uh, uh, visually also all of that really really matters you know so even if you're a design person or if you're a writer or a planner uh everything all the effort that you put in really matters you don't know what is it that the client will take back you don't know what is it that is going to impress him or not so uh make sure that even your content or you know when you are giving ideas say for the invitation or for the branded standees the copy the images all of that should be uh adding back to the brand value or adding back to the theme okay so what kind of pre event content we did teaser riddles we did save the date and so on and so forth and if you can read this uh, you know we had written it uh, so you know we are a bunch of writers and our writer was very very fond of uh, harry potter and who is not a lot of your lot so uh, she had taken this whole uh, language of how we used in uh, you know these 
like spells or you know this wizardry so we had created a riddle with this kind of uh, uh, creative background and the copy also was uh, very little old english like what is a brewing in the witch's cauldron which is not helping a butter beer or a potion to change your form you know so all the words and uh, the phrases that were used were very very thematic and they went well with the magic of learning theme I'll just move uh, ahead. You can read that. Then we had created these thematic gifs. Uh, so we had called it this wizard uh, school of learning. Has summoned the riddle upon the zedesers, and can you unleash the magic? So that whole aura that we created around magic was very, uh, should I say, little role playish. You know, as if they are the little wizards who are being called out, and this is the school of magic and things like that. So we kept that school thing, but it was given a very different uh, feel to it, and it. got them very excited you know so uh, very poetic and a very spell kind of language we had used in this okay then save the dates were created uh, in this way uh, where people could uh, because as i said you know people had to enroll for a certain uh, on a certain date so we had to give them these reminders then uh, we had uh, given i think they had done executed this we had kept this wizard hat uh, just to keep that excitement or you know make people curious at what the hell is happening so a special invite was uh, sent to the facilitators uh, and uh, uh, this also created a lot of impact like you know that people were so interested in what this cap is and everything they actually started enrolling after this mm. then event for the event what did we do we had this uh, you know these uh, little tickets which says uh, that uh, this is a pass to the school the admission somebody said admission ticket so it was like an admission ticket that we did over here then we like you know these diaries and quill kind of pens we had given um, over there uh, to the people then uh, standees read like this you know listen up folks there is something stirring right where you are so if you read the copy and if you read it just see these people were iatians and they were very cerebral okay so they didn't mind sitting and reading all this and it got them really worked up uh, because uh, again it all depends on who's the target group that you are dealing with now if we were talking about sales people or dealers see this some we had made these mistakes in the past you know that we try to give very intellectual themes and you know the copy was very contrived and very too creative sometimes so a lot of clients came back to us like my agency clients and you know they they are very simple people they will not understand this so please can you make it simpler and many times we have got this feedback so we have to go back and make it creative but at the same time simple also you know so like that uh, emoji option that i shared it was as simple as it can get but that is the kind of simplicity some clients are looking for so it needs to be creative but at the same time simple but in this case um, they were all iatians you know so they have a certain level of thinking and they have a certain they understand they read a lot so that's why we had taken a lot of verbos uh, content material which they had really appreciated by the way so then we had suggested you can have these thematic cupcakes uh, you know where you have these harry so we didn't use the harry potter thing as i said you know but somewhere like a wizard cap or uh, potions or something like that uh, we had created then these little bottles of potions magic potions we had kept and each of them had a potion of learning or potion of magic what have you so these are little little things that uh, we had done for the execution there had a lot of branding over there on that day but uh, it was very uh, uh, simple branding uh, and they had a photo booth i think i don't have a photo right now to photo booth to show you guys but uh, and then they had certificates to give out uh, acknowledge the wizards so so that whole one day for them it was like okay you come as somebody and then you go as a wizard so you have learned a lot and the whole magic of learning has come out in you so if you see it was not frivolous the whole reason of doing a wizardry thing was not to because people like that potter or wizardry it was to bring out that element of magic of learning that when you take the effort of you know evolving when you take the effort of learning something new like how you guys are sitting and taking the effort of sitting and learning something different so trust me this is probably somewhere is going to help you somewhere you have evolved somewhere your thinking has changed at least a little bit okay so uh, that learning the magic will be shown somewhere in some presentation you make tomorrow for your clients somewhere probably you will take back something so this is what it was you know bringing out that you know when you learn the, the whole inner potential of whole magic of learning will come out so the message was that subtly so incidentally uh, uh, i would also like to point out here that they 
the initial theme, if you remember, was back to school, magic of learning. They thought that they will do it, but they liked magic of learning itself so much that they did away with back to school. They said, we don't want to. So we just did magic of learning. And this theme um, carried on for at least two years. So they did four events with this particular theme. And each time the visual theme changed. So the first time we did the wizard theme, the next time we did something else with magic of learning and so on and so forth. So it was mostly about the content um, of the event that really, really worked. Uh, they said that we got very good response. Even the US, uh, the US uh, counterparts also executed uh, the same thing. They said they really liked it so much. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not only the event ideas that uh, you know are important, but also your content and how you play with your words, how you play with your material that is equally important for the client. Because sometimes words have a lot of power. See, I'm a writer. We do a lot of copywriting, we do a lot of content writing. So we know that words also can create an impact. So uh, whoever is in your team who is good with words, you should try and participate in the presentation. Uh, use certain phrases, certain keywords, certain uh, word play, uh, you know, use word mapping and all that. You will get really good and different um, uh, thoughts uh, for packaging your presentation. Okay. Okay. More tips. So that was the second case study. Uh, I hope you all learned something and there was some magic of learning happening there. Uh, more tips to win pitches. Um, take unique ideas. As I said, crazy ideas are fine, but they should be relevant. Uh, I'm reiterating connect back to the theme and uh, connect with the brand or the objective as well. So please keep all this in mind, like we did in the wizard team, I just explained that it connected back to the objective of creating excitement. It did create excitement. It did get them the kind of response they were expecting. And they, it, they got a central theme, which was uh, different, but it, uh, it just solved their problem. So always keep that in mind that whatever ideas you suggest, they need to have a, uh, yeah, we can put an owl. <laughs> yeah, also kept with the hat, absolutely in the, the PTA will put you in jail, but doesn't matter. I really like your idea and the dedication. Uh, both case studies are great, thank you. Uh, can we use a brand tagline at the time to create a main theme? Uh, see, uh, if you are creating a brand activation campaign, you can probably use the tagline in a nice way, but it's not necessary that for the event that you're doing for the particular company, you need to do the brand tagline. You can use it in a creative way or you can use it, um, uh, in, get inspiration from it, as I said, but uh, you don't have to create the tagline. You don't have to use the brand tagline to create a main theme. No. Okay. Dhruv, you've asked me synonym, but synonym of what? If you can just tell me, I can respond. Anyway, so I will take the questions uh, later. Let's see what's coming up next. Uh, and how much time do we have? It's four, we have 30 minutes more. So synonym of the brand tagline, you can take derive the meaning of the brand tagline if need be, but it's not uh, important or not required depending on the brief. Okay. Another tip, storytelling approach. Now, um, we all know storytelling is very important when it comes to uh, you know a presentation when i say storytelling it means that you should always give some kind of a connect to any idea that you're giving okay so for example the harry potter thing we connected that okay hogwarts is a school of learning and uh, people came in here as learners and they went back as wizards so that whole analogy you can draw from the story and put that story in the brief that uh, for us this is the analogy that uh, this client's uh, brand is, is is like a school of magic where people can learn and they come out as uh, wizards so uh, storytelling also works the backstories work rationales work a lot so put, keep that in mind whenever you're presenting um, <clears throat> Okay, hot tips, packaging matters. Yes, so uh, how you present also matters a lot. I have given you a lot of tips as to how your presentation should um, flow and what kind of content you should put there. Use images, uh, use good wordplay, uh, uh, and which I will explain. There's one more case study, which I have. I have some time for that as well. So quickly, I'll take you through that case study so you understand what I mean. Um, also, I think, uh, uh, 
as I mentioned, Sukriti has also explained how to make great looking presentations. So please take tips from uh, that too and uh, make your PPT very aesthetic uh, because the other agencies would be doing it. And if your presentation is still looking very rudimentary, then that whole impression, however good your idea is, it needs to look good as well. Hmm? Makeup karna Beautiful karna usko. All of you agree to that. Hmm? Very important. See, sometimes I, I know that always you're in a hurry and so many uh, briefs to catch up on, but um, please take the time to rehearse your presentation before you go for the meeting because um, what happens is uh, uh, when you are not rehearsed and when you're not prepared, uh, you know, it is very evident. Uh, you will not be able to relate. If you're not able to relate, the client will not relate. You will not be able to, you know, go in the flow. You will not be able to uh, tell the story to your client in an impactful or a convincing way. So live the presentation, go through it, rehearse it, talk in your head, you know, uh, uh, maybe even in the car, like if you're going on the way, or just talk in your head, that this is how I'm going. So the, automatically your neurons will start connecting and you will know that in this slide, I have to say this. Otherwise, you know, you keep jumping, there will won't be connectivity. So even if your idea is good, it will go for a toss. The client will not understand what you're trying to say. So at least one of you, uh, whoever in your organization uh, has some communication skills, please develop those. Uh, please develop your storytelling skills. Uh, you know, take up a course if you can get some training or whatever it is. But there is a whole way of doing presentations. You know, your soft skills, all of that matter. The way you speak, the way you tone yourself, the way you, uh, uh, you know, overall tell the story. All of this is important. You know, look. So when we were advertising, we learned all this from our seniors because they had very natural. Uh, storytelling skills and uh, it came very beautifully to them so you can also learn from your seniors or see how they present because over time when you practice and when you rehearse it it starts coming very naturally to you so if you are uh, somebody who's still new to the industry and still you're going for presentations then please uh, try and prepare yourself uh, before you present okay somebody had asked me should we take samples yes please it will really help uh, if you show some uh, actual work that you have done, take banded samples, custom samples, or just samples, whatever you're suggesting, anything hard uh, you can show, it will really work because most of it is all digital, right? Everything is on a slide. But if you can actually take something uh, to show them, um, they know that this, is, this exists and it's possible, okay? Uh, as I said earlier, your hard work in your presentation should be evident. And how is it going to be evident? The thought that you put behind it, all the details that you put behind it, the amount of designing that you do, the amount of uh, detailing that you do, all of this will be shown to the client. But what's most important is that your idea should be strong enough. After that, if your other ideas are detailed, it might not matter. But if your idea is strong, that means you need good brainstorming and good thinking. So put in all, all your hard work and make the client feel that yes, they have really taken my uh, brief very seriously and uh, they will get the confidence that this agency is interested in my work. So clients will, if the clients know that you are hungry for work and that you will do a good job, they will probably consider you uh, as well. So work hard towards any pitch that you do. I'm gonna pause here for more questions if anybody has quickly, because I have one more case study. I have some time, I think, unless, uh, unless any of you feel that uh, this is, fine and we'll have had enough. So any questions I'm going to take? Uh, it is, uh, is it good to start a presentation with a short video? I think it's a fantastic point uh, that you have made. If you can, if you have the time, make a nice uh, video of the theme or a background or whatever you have. Uh, definitely it's a good attention grabber. So yeah, short video makes sense. Um, Rajkumar ji, I have learned a lot from him. Yes, uh, Rajkumar ji is also a veteran in the industry and I've had the good fortune to have worked, uh, know him and worked uh, with him for a couple of briefs when I was in Ogilvy. Uh, three are types of people or when you go to present a PPT, Shruta, Shruta and Sutta. Okay, wow. So, uh, uh, Dhruv is saying that uh, uh, Rajkumar Jaji has... Uh, suggested, or I think that's the style of presenting the three types of people uh, when you go to present a PPT. So one is a listener, the shrota, I think it's a Sanskrit word, the strota, the person I think who's talking, and I can't read the rest of it. Uh, wait, 
the strota and the sota the person who always <laughs> sleeps in the presentation so i don't know which uh, category you guys belong to today uh, i all the sota ones or i all the shruta ones so please tell me okay uh, any more questions wow thank you uh, many of you are not sleeping someone has asked can we go to the session again uh, so uh, we can arrange for this or i think there is already a recording uh, which would be shared with you guys so you all can definitely go to this again uh, how can we reach out to you i think uh, we will share the email address uh, of the panelists uh, so deepak let me know if i can share it here or you would share it with the attendees later on uh, definitely we will make sure that you get my email id and you can connect with me anytime okay great so i think we'll move ahead um, yeah linkedin i'm very much there my name is payal shah karwa uh, so i don't know if if i type it here okay you can find me on linkedin and uh, you can email me at and connect with me here okay if you send me an invitation i will check my linkedin after 3 days because i i am going to be not working the next 3 days i want to take few days off anyway so uh, going to the next case an example is a different uh, case study it's a sales conference um first we saw an rnr then we saw a smaller scale internal event and now we will take a sales conference which is a little different from the other two case studies so decoding the brief as we all know uh, it's a pharma annual sales conference done in bombay uh, sales team from india was a tg um objective was to motivate and communicate the message creatively so so keep that in mind that motivating and communicating but in a creative way uh, again very vague it's very very vague so when you read it for the first time say how the hell am i going to do that but then that's where your techniques will come in and the how you read the brief will come in challenge make a routine sales conference interesting i'll tell you what that meant okay now this is important now you know um, a lot of corporates you know have these very complex um briefs that they come up with where they will say that a pointers uh, for your communication or what we want to communicate stems from these three pointers that we born so we are reborn this time after two years we have emerged as a new company altogether so they had undergone some challenges earlier and they took some time to uh, you know reject things or whatever changes they had to make and then they were reborn uh, after two years so this was the first thing the second thing was resolve means take a resolution determined to face all the hardships and we will continue to do so and research that we will reemerge from the chaos and the hardships which have made us stronger so this is these are the pointers that the client had given okay these are the three things that we want to communicate and a the theme should somewhere in the conference these should come out as well okay so again like you know it's it's a little complicated sometimes that how do we communicate all these elements in one theme uh, you know all these questions do come uh, when you start ideating so uh, i'll tell you how we decode this so uh, we understood the brief like with this we have transformed okay uh, we have uh, uh, searched me uh, sorry what was the word reborn okay resolve and research okay so we have transformed we have emerged as a stronger entity and we will win so this was a simpler translation of what they were trying to say so that we could build up the theme okay uh this is a build up we created and then the we gave the theme we are reborn it's time now to resolve to take a resolution that we will emerge stronger and it's time to research it's time to what do you think could be a theme if you were in our place then what theme you would have suggested should i just replay the slides once more okay this was the build up we had given that the client had said we are reborn the client says no we're going to resolve to be stronger and now it's time to research it's it's time to now come back to life it's time to what any ideas thoughts if you all were in our place 
renaissance very nice rise very nice the winner makes it all all right <clears throat> reincarnation nice reinvent nice okay so the good thing is i'm seeing a lot of words uh, <clears throat> starting from r <clears throat> i'll tell you why it's a good thing um it's time to act new beginnings okay so when you're thinking of a theme na uh, we need to think of not sentences or you know uh, just phrases okay there should be action words there should be a lot of uh, uh, action or aggression if you need aggression that is but it should give some kind of a uh, uh, trigger to the person who is listening to it okay so instead of using longer sentences it should be as short and maybe one or two words as possible so i will sapadi had already taken that uh, route has already said the answer our theme was rise up okay now it's a very simple sentence and a very common sounding phrase i admit to that um but there was a reason why we chose this word you know because there was a connect to it you know it was reborn resurge now it is time to rise now it is time to go up now it is time to uh, take the next step forward or ahead okay rise and shine yes luminous soil so uh, we so renaissance reincarnation very nice options it's just that again as i said it's a sales conference so you know when you use difficult words or words which are not commonly uh, you know known to the lowest common denominator of your tg then it might not connect so we stopped giving very very big fat theme names uh, all the time so we try and be creative but at the same time be simple so rise up uh is something which we suggested because it connected uh, with the whole flow okay now i'll tell you how we executed the theme so this was the theme only but the creative execution how we did and how we extended it so rise up to transform rise up to evolve rise up to triumph so these are very motivating laddering that we tried to create um with this one theme with this one word okay because this is what they wanted to motivate their sales people so we thought that transform evolve win triumph is all about winning and this is what sales guys need they need just some kind of upliftment all the time you know so that's this is how we used the theme extension hmm? uh, a tip for uh, these kind of themes is um, use a lot uh, of word play so when i say word play you know i said that i, I like to themes which started from r so uh, research reborn all of them uh, were very thematic words and they had a little alliteration to it a little sound to it okay everything started from the letter r so i would go for a theme also like a lot of you have suggested it starts with r because there is a continuity in that and uh, the thought should also be continuous you know so reborn research and when you research when you are born again what would you do you will rise up so it just flowed in that way so we took that as a next simplest and most logical way to do it okay so that was a tip for you now how do we execute this big theme in a creative way you have to bring it to life you no know? so how are you going to do it now what is the one real life phenomena which communicates uh, we have 10 15 minutes so i'm quickly going to breeze through this what is the one real life phenomenon which creatively communicates the entire concept okay the rise of the indian cricket team okay so this was the concept we had taken now take a breather and understand why we did this i know it's a very common sounding team and a very common sounding team. again cricket but there was a logic behind this okay now incidentally when we were pitching at that time it was i think 2018 um uh, this is what had happened to the indian cricket team if you all remember that in 2016 you know dhoni was going down a lot of turmoil then 2017 virat came new leadership and then suddenly we became the number one team in the icc world rankings so there was a whole transformation this is exactly the journey of what the client had said you know we born we surge win and this is the journey which the indian cricket team had also taken exactly at that time so the team had transformed it had triumphed and it had risen up. okay so that's the reason we thought that well plus also keeping in mind that you know sales people again you need to look for a theme which commonly is liked by them and uh, maybe now cricket is not that uh, you know very uh, what should i say it's not people are fans of uh, cricket so much so as 
we used to be about five six years back. But still, uh, you know, uh, the genre of people you were talking to still do watch and follow cricket a lot. So, and it had a rationale behind it. It's not only because they followed cricket, but we thought that it's just kind of fitting in so well. So, take this journey with us of rising from boys, from being boys to being men, and this uh, journey of the cricket team also blends with the journey of this company. Okay. A common theme. This is a tip for you guys. A common theme can be supported with a strong logic so even if you have a very very common theme like say bollywood and cricket and these are the most simplest and most obvious but if there is a story behind it and if you feel that it really makes sense because it's helping you communicate what you want to do then don't shy away from uh, presenting that as an option okay how can we take this theme ahead so what did we do was the treatment so the treatment of the whole team was we wanted to bring about the victorious moments of the indian indian cricket team because they had done really well in uh, 17 they were coming up in 18 they had really done very well so uh, all the winning moments uh, you know like they were champions and they had won some test matches and odis or whatever we wanted to take that under the leadership of virat kohli and use only those for inspiration or motivation the execution was something like this Uh, one tip before i start explaining is that whatever you are uh, suggesting whatever idea it is explain it in such a way that the like it's like reading a book when you reading a book okay it's a narrative okay uh, the reader the writer has narrated something and you are able to visualize it in your mind okay you are able to engage with the book it's there are no images there but you can still visualize it so in a ppt also yes you use images but the narration that you do the way you talk all the whatever you write on your ppt should be able to tell the client he should be able to visualize exactly what you're trying to say you know it should be like playing in front of him hmm? so that's a tip for making a good presentation so this is how we executed it the invitation campaign which uh, creators as i said we don't have any creatives uh, to you know the it will be a simple invitation teaser copy will be asterisk 2018 not out because you know whenever someone gets uh, uh, you know uh, when the match is over and the person is not out you write an asterisk so what we wanted to say is that it means that despite all the hardships we are not down and out we are still playing okay the visual walk through <laughs> the ambience and decor uh, it would be like the pavilion stand and uh, they will all be given caps when they come in and there will be these uh, uh, you know very motivational branding over there with a lot of these uh, quotes by these sports people my goal is not to be better than anyone else but better than i used to be so all these motivational quotes to motivate the sales people from the cricketing point of view sticking to the theme all the time so if a theme is cricket and all the victorious moments we are going to stick to that okay then pre function engagement it's a cricket shot booth very simple idea uh, give them a green screen give them a bat and whoever is their favorite uh, bats person batsman or whatever is a favorite shot like the helicopter shot of dhoni or you know sachin had this whatever square shot or whatever you called it so they can just play the sh uh, shot and you will click their videos and they will get it uh, uh, in their phones the stage setup would be like the sports studio theme like you know how these commentators they comment uh, they do post mortem of the set of the matches that would be the stage uh, the event would be something like this so you know sales conferences they want to make the conference interesting so it's not something like an r and r where you have to give an experience every time on an everything okay but the little little touches that they want which connect back to the theme okay so how are you going to do that for example we said that the afternoon breakout session can be called the dressing room because it's an informal session where all everybody will gather together and have a conversation or we'll just evaluate certain things that they have done then uh, the mcs whoever is going to uh, conduct the event can talk like the cricket commentators do okay uh, the uh, opening presentation by the md would be called the opening over so all these little little touches uh, we had suggested uh, along the way how to make it interesting and not like a typical conference then uh, we had suggested this entertainment act to launch the theme so while this is not exactly a cricket thing already we have a lot of cricketing elements but we also have to keep in mind the theme of rise so when you say rise you know the first thing you will think about is the sky or you will think about something uh, you know over you aerial so 
when we thought of aerial, we thought that aerial acrobatics is a good uh, option because it's all about rising up and, you know, uh, uh, elevating yourself. So we had given this option to them for the entertainment. Or we had said that if you want to do a story of how you were reborn and how you researched, then you can do a dance act. Uh, and you know how Illuminati, all of you have worked with them at some point in time, and they can do a good storytelling with them. Then other presentations can be called the power play. So if you see, I'm trying to communicate how we made these little, little thematic elements throughout the, um, throughout the presentation so that we stuck to the theme also and made it interesting as well. Okay, then other <laughs> presentations <laughs> can be given innovative names like something declaration, Hawkeye, and so on and so forth. But these are the elements that they wanted. They said, how do we make it interesting? Like we don't want a PPT to be called a PPT. So we gave them an inventive, innovative name. Then we had team games, you know, like bowling, collecting points. So each, uh, each bowling, if you made a six, then you get so many points and team games and everything we had suggested. Then, uh, you know, during cricket matches, how you have these fan waves, Mexican waves. So we had something called a musical wave where uh, all these salespeople can get together and make uh, music and help them rise up and help the spirits also to rise. So if you see in the, when you read also, uh, the way we present the concept, there is a connect that why are we suggesting this wave? Why are we suggesting energetic music? Because we wanted their spirits to rise. So all of you have worked with Drum Cafe again at some point in life. And when you actually see the whole audience doing it together, you know, that whole energy has a different crescendo to it. So uh, that's what we wanted to communicate to them. Motivation speaker options, coming back to the cricket theme. So, you know, Saurav Ganguly is a more professional speaker. Harsha Bhopne is a professional speaker. So they fit in very well. So no brainer over here. Okay, then evening awards, again, we had to stick to the theme. So we said that this can be called men, men and women of the matches 2017 for the, because they were getting awarded for the last year uh, performances. And the presentation would be like a cricket presentation ceremony, like, you know, every, after every match, how you have Ravi Shastri coming and speaking to the different people. And then you have these big, big checks given out. So similar kind of a, a, a presentation what ceremony you could do. Uh, the stage could be like the pitch, the 22 yard pitch that you have. It could be designed like that with the cricketing stumps. Uh, the ceremony could be called winnings uh, or something like that. You know, so all these little, little theme, thematic names, elements, wordplay uh, we did, which really gave an edge uh, to, the, to the presentation and it connected back with the, what we wanted to say. Okay, yeah. This is more or less it. Um, for the gala event, uh, we wanted to not do the same cricket theme again because everything was around cricket. So, and they were salespeople, so a little, little bit of Hindi and English. So we suggested these two com stand-up comedy artists. And uh, day three was nothing but a post-mortem session, like how you call post-mortem of a match. So the teams got together and did an evaluation. And then we did this whole, um, we suggested this whole, a uh, uh, theme where you know like 2019 was supposed to be the world cup so how the team is preparing for it similarly you guys have to prepare for the year to come so all of this was connected back in some way drawing analogies to our cricket team at that point in time and uh, it was not generic okay we were connecting it to that particular time frame to that particular journey in which even our cricket team was undergoing so it was not key ticket just because they like cricket take cricket what i'm trying to say is that Giveaway options were uh, autograph wallpapers <coughs> and um, uh, autobiography of Rahul Dravid. All these are motivational stories and again, the, the theme. So that was how uh, we took, uh, you know, this little serious kind of a sales conference and made it a little more interesting. And if you see the whole journey, we tried and uh, connect back to the theme or connect back to the, to the object of objective of motivating uh, uh, the salespeople, keeping the TG in mind, okay? So I think uh, this is uh, more or less uh, from me today. Uh, I think these three case studies have given you a different perspective. Uh, hopefully you've understood some lot of tips I've um, tried and shared with you and you'll have got at least something out of it. So if you have any specific questions, once more, I'm going to take a pause here. And before we end the session, I think we have uh, about five minutes more. 
thank you everybody if you like the session fantastic sessions all tips well taken thanks a lot louis tanas uh, and i'm ready for more questions for a few minutes um, assuming that everyone is still wide awake and no sota all shotas here thank you dhruv yeah so uh, in the interim uh, this is our website uh, our twitter id phone numbers in case you want to note it down and thank you everybody once again um, no questions today Thanks. I'm going to stop sharing, and I I want to I want to see uh, yeah. So. File. It really looks like you have answered a lot of people's questions and their queries as well. But I think now we've given them a moment, and one question has come in. Yes. how do we engage clients to sit back and listen to the ppt in the end well uh, you can take an acting lesson from anupam kher and do that also or a theatrical session but uh, uh, on a serious note i think rehearsing your presentation is very important improvise on your storytelling skills uh, practice really really will make you better because don't expect that you will rehearse once and you will get it perfect over a period of time as you keep going for presentations and as you see other people presenting and you will keep your own mind will tell you how to improvise uh, how to keep them engaged is your presentation itself should be very interesting with a lot of images uh, somebody said videos see if you can take uh, <coughs> some videos with you um, keep it animated but it is up to you as the storyteller how you keep the person interested in that uh, presentation so do not uh, uh, you know do not talk too much you know like time yourself that you know this slide i will talk only for a minute or so uh, give them some time to think interact in between ask them questions don't keep talking 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 like in, like for example in this session like in between i was giving you guys a chance to talk just take these tips uh, and uh, i'm sure you will keep them engaged uh, throughout uh, the one mantra to win a pitch okay uh one mantra to win a pitch i mean i don't think there is one mantra to win the pitch uh is there a spell or maybe we can ask harry potter to invent a spell i think that will be your mantra but uh, i think uh, critical as i said work very hard on your pitch no matter whoever you are pitching against make sure that uh, your ideas are really good i know sometimes you don't get the time but don't make it an excuse uh, to say that you know i didn't get good ideas um, brainstorm a lot uh, with your friends uh, your colleagues rather and uh, i mean let the client know that you have worked very hard uh, on this presentation as i said i'll reiterate the clients really likes in good ideas and they like it when people work on their briefs when they feel that someone has taken so much time effort thought so much about it hard there is no there's no uh, should i say a surrogate to hard work hmm? uh any other question how would you connect a theme for a family day with tg is diversified uh, so srini i don't know if you were part of the session yesterday but uh, uh, i think for for uh, a family day i think the one tg that you need to really take care of is the kid so if the kid is happy the parents are happy so take a theme which the kids will be entertained and obviously because kids are participating the parents automatically will participate so somebody has suggested some really nice ideas i had given a fictional brief on a family day for sir pixel and somebody had said that you can do a rainbow theme thing somebody had said you can do a comic con thing so if you are doing it for adults comic con might or might not work for employees because you know in india we are a little conservative but if you tell okay for your kids you do a comic con and you tell okay the whole family needs to come and come dressed as a particular character then i'm sure everybody will participate because they will do anything given i tooth for their kids so uh, 
if the TG is diversified, it's not. Just take care of the bacha and the parents will be happy. Humor works a lot, but humor where in the presentation, uh, Dhruv, is that what you meant? Make eye contact, absolutely. Uh, don't stare at the client all the time uh, if they're looking into their phones, but make an eye contact. Yes, comprehensive. Okay, thank you, great. Listen more, talk less. Is that for me? Hmm? Okay, so uh, great. I think I have kept it, uh, uh, I have uh, answered all the questions. Uh, and uh, I think it's about time uh, that uh, Prisha, you took over. And if there are any more questions, we'll take them later. You can email me, as I said, or you can connect with me. All right, Payal, thank you so much. In fact, it would be lovely if all of you in the comment section right now, you let us know in the chat how much you have enjoyed this session and also give a big goodbye uh, to Payal as we say thank you to her and do let us know what you did think about it. Lots of love as you can see coming in right now and really thanking you for this session. I particularly really liked your presentation on how you all took your clients to Japan and incorporated uh, all those elements in there. I absolutely loved uh, the way that you all had done that one. And of course, the Harry Potter one. If you want to put in the chat and let us know which was the one that you also really enjoyed from the concepts and the ideas that had been shared, you can do that as well in the chat. Yeah, it looks like the Japan one did go down really well with our audience too. And of course, Payal, like you did mention, a lot of people are wondering how they can get hold of you. So I'm assuming they can reach out to you on LinkedIn as well. Absolutely, anytime. Uh, uh, you can, uh, I have just shared my email address as well and my number and the LinkedIn, you can find me on Payal Shah Karwa, just connect. And thank you all for showing that kind of love and you all have really participated and answered questions. Uh, it's uh, just amazing because I wasn't really sure how uh, this will go, but it's really gone well because of you guys. So thank you once again. Thank you, Deepak, Prakash. Thank you, Frisha. Thank you, entire Ima. And I had, I really had a great time. And a big thank you to everyone. Week on week, you have been logging in and you have been showing us so much of your love and your support. We also need to extend a very big thank you to the people that work behind the scenes to make sure that we keep getting these powerful sessions to you. So we'd like to extend a big thank you to Mr. Vipul Pandey, Mr. Deepak Kawar, Mr. Raghav Roy Kapoor, Mr. Hajinder Singh, Team Tag Labs, and of course, the EMA Secretariat. Thank you all. I am Frisia, and I look forward to interacting with each and every one of you again. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.